Hello everyone, and in this video we're going to be exploring the updates and features of the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet. We're going to be looking at the improvements they've made across various tasks, from working with visually heavy PDFs, to testing logical reasoning, analyzing datasets, and so much more. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at is how to extract information from a visually heavy PDF. And as we saw with Claude's new information that they've provided, they become a lot better in visual data extraction and they're able to extract complex information from these visuals. So in order for us to test it, I've got a PDF that's got quite a lot of visual diagrams, technical diagrams as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that document into Claude and I'm going to test whether it's actually able to provide detailed answers on these visuals. So I'm going to add this prompt here that asks it to explain the break that's on page 15, focusing on the technical details. And you can see it's come back with a detailed response explaining the complex mechanical assembly drawing. And it talks about the different parts of the drawing as well. And we can see that it's actually been able to take each part of the technical drawing and explain it in quite a lot of detail. And I can also do the same with complex PDFs that have a lot of data in them. So for example, I've got a PDF here. It's got a lot of information on the profit and loss and the balance sheets. So I've now uploaded the financial statements and I'm going to add the prompt here that says, analyze the consolidated statements and provide me with the key insights. And what you'll see is that it comes back with detailed insights and findings from these statements. And you can see it's given me the overview on financial performance, the financial position, the risk management, strategic developments. Overall, its capacity to synthesize and integrate information from very large PDFs has improved dramatically. So this PDF, for example, is about 114 pages. And I remember that large documents would not have been possible to upload with the previous Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So now this is definitely a vast improvement in what it can do. So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is how well the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet performs with logical reasoning. If we look at the benchmarks, we can see that the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet is now a lot better at graduate level reasoning, increasing from 59.4% to 65%. So let's see how well it does with certain problems. So in an interesting paper by Williams and Huckle, they talk about easy problems that LLMs get wrong, such as visual spatial reasoning, contextual understanding, math mathematical reasoning, popular science, and so on. And what they've done, which is really interesting, and I'll leave you the link to this below in case you want to do it yourself, is that they've come up with this online quiz that actually compares how humans perform compared to LLM responses. And you can actually complete this quiz here and you can go through the questions. But what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be taking these questions and we're going to be prompting Claude 3.5 Sonnet, the new version, and looking at whether it will be able to respond with the correct answer. So we're going to take one of these questions, which is quite easy, actually. It says, a farmer wants to cross the river and take with him a wolf, a goat, and a cabbage. He has a boat with three secure separate compartments. If the wolf and the goat are alone on the shore, the wolf will eat the goat. If the goat and the cabbage are alone on the shore, the goat will eat the cabbage. How can the farmer efficiently bring the wolf, the goat, and the cabbage across the river without anything being eaten? So let's enter that into Claude. You'll see, and this is what they've said in the benchmark, is that what it does first is identifies the constraints from the message. So it analyzes the steps and you can start to see the reasoning that it takes in order to solve these problems. The farmer needs to transport a wolf or goat and cabbage across the river. He has a boat with three secure separate compartments. If left alone together, the wolf will eat the goat. If left alone together, the goat will eat the cabbage. So it's broken down the problem in its components. This is actually an interesting variation of the classic river crossing puzzle. But with a key difference, the boat has three compartments rather than the usual single passenger limitation. It's now reflected on a previous example that it knows and it's now drawn connections between that previous example and this new one and looked at what the difference actually is and then it says given these constraints the solution becomes quite straightforward the farmer can simply place all three items the wolf goat and cabbage in the separate secure compartments of the boat and cross the river in a single trip so they are in secure separate compartments the wolf cannot eat the goat the goat cannot eat the cabbage everything arrives safely on the other shore in one efficient trip and then it tells tells us that this is actually much simpler than the classic version of the puzzle because the three compartments eliminate the need for multiple trips and the risk of leaving incompatible pairs together either shore. So 
you can see, okay, it's a simple problem, but initially what the problem we had with LLMs is that they might get confused with the additional information and they would not be able to come to the correct conclusion. So as we can see with Claude, what you get is, and, and we're starting to see this with uh, ChatGPT's O1 model as well, but the step-by-step -step reasoning there is very strong. So the next thing I'm going to be looking at is data analysis. And if you notice here that on the new model, it says new analysis tool uploads CSVs for Claude to analyze quantitative data with high accuracy and create interactive data visualizations that you can try out. So this is actually what we're going to be doing for this next use case. And previously, we weren't able to upload these large CSV files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Kaggle, which is a great site for downloading data sets. And I'm going to download this Google Play Store app data set. I'm just going to show you the file quickly which is quite an extensive data set that has over a thousand rows of information so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Claude I'm gonna attach my data set into Claude and I'm just gonna ask it to analyze this data set and provide me with the key insights Okay, and we can see that it's come back with the key information. It first talks about the category distribution, it tells us about the most popular categories, they're the family, game, business, education, and finance. There's a strong preference of practical utility apps, then it compares the pricing models. Approximately 92% of apps are free. It talks about the ratings patterns. It talks about the size trends, the content ratings, Android version. And then if we look at the uh, side panel here, we can see that it's come back with the graphs that display these insights into a very visually appealing manner. So we've got here the top categories distribution. We've got the rating distribution as well, showed really nicely. We've got the pricing distribution. It even suggests what we can follow up with. So, I'm, for example, let's say, can you dive deeper into the app categories? So let's enter that. Okay, and you can see that now it's come back with a detailed breakdown of trends and patterns by category as well. It's talking about communication, social apps, the finance and banking apps, the entertainment and streaming. And again, we've got these amazing interactive bar charts that we can use. So as we've seen, the data analysis part of Claude is very extensive and it's even better now in not only extracting the information but analyzing that information intelligently and showing you the different patterns in the trends. So for the next use case we're going to be exploring one of Claude's really good features which we already know from the previous model that it can create really intelligent animations and I'm going to see if there's any improvement on this so I'm just going to add here a prompt that says create a scientific animation of the blood vessel showing the blood flow. So as you can see, it's a really nice looking animation of the blood flow and it's taken us a lot less prompts to get it to look like a decent animation. And of course, you need to prompt it to get it to the final stage that you want it to be. But I think it's done a really good job from one initial prompt. So I hope you found these updates useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.